Want to learn more about PSM topics? Be sure to check out the Creating and Maintaining Optical Transport Services using the BTI 7000 series or BTI 7800 series courses. For full details, just visit juniper.net slash course slash BTI 7000 or BTI 7800. Now let's get to your learning bite. Hi, uh, my name is Bill Brinkman. I'm an SVT engineer here at BTI. What I've been asked to do is to go over a couple of quick commands that you can use to verify that your PSM server is healthy and also to check your connection to any one of your NEs to make sure that the PSM server does have a valid connection and can get to the device in question. The first thing I'm going to show you quickly is how to get into the dashboard, which is a recent new tool that uh, the guys in Belfast have put together for us to use. Uh, It is part of the regular PSM install. Uh, What you do is you get to it via an internet browser. I am going to use Firefox, so let me fire that up here for you guys. I'll do a new window. I'll drag it over to your screen. So here we got my Firefox screen. Now, uh, assuming that your PSM server is up and running, you can get to the dashboard via the IP address. So it's 127.41.9000. Okay. So now we're into the dashboard. There's a lot of stuff in here that you can get health on all the systems, but really what I'm going to concentrate now on is how to get information about the PSM server itself. And what you do is you scroll down a little bit, and over on the right-hand side of the screen here, you'll see system configuration, gives you server details, how long it's up. But if you look here, you see Monit Service Manager. What this does is get you a nice GUI representation of what you would get if you typed monit commands through the shell prompt. And what it does is present you with all the information you need that you would normally get from monit. Uh, one of the things here is what I see is uh, the first line here is system, my system name, the status that it's running, and this over here on the right you've got your CPU loads for all the CPUs that it's using, as well as your memory load. Next line down is all your processes, how long they've been up, how much they're loading down the CPU, and the amount of memory that they're using. And then the last section down here is your uh, file system, so your partitions, and how much space is being used on your partitions. Um, And you can see from here is if if you're hitting up against a wall, like you've got too much stuff on there, and you need to do some maintenance. That's the easiest way to find out the health of your PSM server. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to get in touch with the network elements. And, you know, you've got your PSM server up and running, and you just want to make sure that at your customer site, you can get through all the firewalls, all the different router hops to get to an NE. So what you're going to do is you're going to log into your PSM server. So what I'm going to do is look up at the screen (laughs) and I'm going to log into a server that's not in my building. I'm actually in Littleton, Massachusetts. So I'm going to log into a server up in Ottawa, a PSM server up there, and I'm going to have it try to talk to one of my 7800s back down here in the Littleton lab so we can actually see what a trace route looks like through multiple router hops. So what I'm going to do is uh, going to SSH into the shell of the server. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually make this even easier for me. I'm going to tab up. Okay. So now I'm logged into the server. So really all you have to do is know the IP address of the any that you're looking for. 
and the command that you type is trace root. Make sure it's spelled R-O-U-T-E, not R-O-O-O-T. You can do a trace route to a specific port that's on that device. And when I talk about ports, you know, on the 7800, there is an SNMP port that's open so that we can get basic device information. Um, all of our 7000 devices use this SNMP port as well, so you can do a trace route to those ports. With the 7800, all of the configuration is done on the NetConf port. And that port in this case is 2022 or 2022. So the trace route command would be trace route minus P, the specific port number do you want to get to, uh, a capital minus T, which actually uh, truncates all the information and doesn't uh, give you blank information for as, as many hops that uh, Traceroute could actually handle. I can show you that command too and see, show you the difference with and without the T. And then the IP address of the NE. So once you invoke that, what we see here are each line here is a different hop through a router from the PSM server up in Ottawa all the way back down here to Massachusetts and Littleton and through all the routers that we got through here to get to my lab to actually talk to that device. And it gives you concise information. It says that it finally found it. Now, I'll just show you real quick what this would look like if you do, do the minus T and actually how long it actually takes to go through. So you actually sit here and you have to wait quite a bit to go through trace route, which can is set up to do a default of around 30 hops, and uh, you, know, you have to wait for it to actually try 30 times to finally get through. And it really doesn't tell you that it actually got there uh, specifically on the screen. Uh, basically, it, it times out and it says that it got basically to the last router, but it doesn't, like with the minus T, it actually shows that it actually got to uh, my NE. So that's trace route. So in this case, what we've proved is that the PSM server can get through all the firewalls, all the router hops to the NE, and should be able to discover and actually monitor that device for you through the PSM GUI. The other thing you can try too, it's a really quick and easy configuration test here, is the NC command. And the NC command, all this is is quick and dirty, allows your PSM server to actually open up that particular port that you want, you're want you concerned about. Trace root connect can doesn't actually open up the port. It just says there's a port there on that NE. This will actually open up the port and say, yeah, if you want to run, if you want to run uh, SNMP, or in the example I'm going to give you to get into the NetConf on the NE, you can, uh, you, you'll know that that port's up and running and, and that NE is all set and configured. So the command itself is NC, space minus V as in Victor, Z Zulu, N as in Nancy. Don't ask me what those mean, but I'm sure you can look it up on the internet. Google is your friend. Space, the IP address of the any that you want to connect to, space, and then the port number. And again, the net comp port number is 2022, and that's what I'm going to do here. And what's nice about this is it gives you a uh, response back saying, yes, I was able to actually open up that port and, and see that it's up and running and that service is up and running, that process is up and running on that NE. So you should be able to log in and actually do, do work on it. And so those are the three quick ways you can uh, check the health of the PSM and actually see that it can actually connect to any one of your NEs uh, across the, uh, the network. Thank you. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.